In this video, I'm going to tell you all about a charting service that I really like called TradingView. Hello everyone, my name is Michael Lamont. I'm the founder of ChartYourTrade.com and our goal is to inspire millions of hardworking people just like you to take advantage of the stock market. Now, I started doing these YouTube videos or really getting into doing these YouTube videos again maybe about four months ago. And since then, I've been using a lot of charts and the charting service that I'm using is TradingView. Now, a lot of you have asked questions about TradingView, how I use a lot of these different fancy indicators, how I annotate the charts, how uh, all the different tools within it. So I wanted to put together a video that shows you some of the basics, but getting into a lot of those finer things because it Trading View does a lot of really cool, really amazing things, and it can help you save a lot of time, but it's not really very intuitive of how to do that stuff yourself. There's, uh, there is some coding involved, and I, I'm not a great coder by any chance, but thankfully TradingView also does have a fantastic community, and I was able to get some help, and I want to pay it forward and give you guys that help, so... Uh, sit tight and we'll go through it. So the first thing that I want to do is give you some of the basics on how TradingView works. Now, what we have right here is a chart of the S&P 500. We have a daily chart up here, a weekly chart down here. I'm using the Pro Plus service, so I have a few more options that are available than the, uh, than the Pro or the, the free version. Um, and TradingView is like super cheap too. It's uh, like $10 a month or $20 a month for the Pro Plus version that, that I have. But you could lay the charts out in a lot of different ways. So if you just want to look at it that way, you could look at it side by side. I like to stack the charts on top of each other. You could link um, the symbols to all the charts. So that way I'm able to look at a daily chart and a weekly chart of whatever uh, I'm looking at. That, that's one of the ways that I really like to do it. Um, you can unlink that and you can have a chart of, say, the S&P 500 and whatever stock you're looking at. Very, very helpful. A lot of different easy ways to do this kind of stuff. Um, the way to get moving averages on your chart. So, and so how I built this was First, you would go to indicators, right? And then you could just search for what you want. So moving average, and then it puts it right there. And then you could click the little wheel over there and change it to whatever uh, type of moving average you want. So 50, 10, 21, 200, um, anything in between, just put it there and then change the style, you could make change the color, change the thickness of the line, whatever you want to do, uh, very simple to do. Then um, with chart annotations, let me just shift this over this way a little bit so you can see it. Um, there are a lot of different types of annotations that you could do. I don't get too complex in the type of annotation that I do. I love to keep things very simple. So I stick mostly to just drawing trend lines and it's real easy to draw trend lines and you can uh, double click uh, on it and then get the exact coordinates that you want, change up the style of it, um, change the color, change the thickness, um, change uh, the, the actual line itself. You know, a lot of different things that you could easily do and manipulate within uh, within TradingView. Then you have all these different chart annotations. So uh, some of the ones that I like to use, I like to use text. Um, so for example, I um, this recent trade that I've been talking about with BlackBerry Forever. You could bring up a brand new text box and fill in everything that you want there and then move it around the screen, keep it there. And it, for me, having a text box like this makes it very simple to 
see what's happening in real time and, and kind of evaluate my plan as it's going. So uh, in this example, I entered uh, BlackBerry at $11.45. My initial stop was $11.15 and I was risking 30 cents uh, on, per share on that trade, right? So from entry to exit, that's how much I'm risking. So when I make a multiple of the amount that I risked, then I like to start peeling bits and pieces off the trade. And so BlackBerry has run very, very far for me. It ran to $14.55 since I bought it. And so that makes almost an 11R trade. So 11 times the amount that, that I risked. So being able to have a text box there uh, makes it very easy. So just go, you click this over here, and you would add the text box. You could also do call outs like we saw on the S&P 500, where you're basically going and picking a spot on the chart and linking it out and you can change the size of the text, the, the font, and the color. So lots of different ways to annotate, uh, annotate your charts here. Now I'd like to walk you through some of the more advanced features of TradingView. Now this is something that admittedly I would not have really been able to take too much advantage of without the help of the TradingView community. So if you're if you want additional help beyond what you have here, you can check out the TradingView community. That's another feature that they have. You could go over to let's close that and over here they have a whole social community and they have a lot of different topics and you can go through it and find what you're looking for. Go to the developer section and uh, I think they actually have one for PineScript. Yeah, PineScript editor right here and ask your questions. And that's how I got a few of these developed. Some of those guys are really great. So anyway, back to, uh, back to this. So the first one that I wanted to show you was the relative strength uh, pine script or the relative strength indicator that we're going to overlay. So the first thing that you do is open up this pine editor. And what you would do is, for me, I have it saved, right? So once you create these, you can add them, name them, um, and then they're there within your own personal login forever. So relative strength versus the S&P 500. I have a couple of these, if you notice. Uh, I was messing around with some of them, tweaking them. This is the one that I use the most. This is the one that I like, the relative strength versus the S&P 500, because it gives me the relative strength versus the S&P 500, which is what I'm most interested in. So see that there's how you would name it. You could give it a little short title. Um, like all the this different code down here and I will link the code in the description I'll copy and paste it into the description of this video so you can grab it there and I'll also I also plan on creating a blog post for this too so that way everybody could just go there grab what they need copy paste and put it into your own trading view so nice easy package but you would just take this and then add the chart. And it added it to the daily chart. So for each one, you're going to need, for each chart that you have opened, you're going to need to add the, these indicators individually. So come over here, add it again. And there's our relative strength line versus the S&P 500. Another Pine script that I really, really like is 
to be able to automatically flag distribution days. So the way that I look at distribution days, is a distribution day is any down day of minus 0.2% or greater on heavier volume than the day preceding it. That comes straight out of that book that I was talking about a while ago, uh, How to Make Money in Stocks by William O'Neill. He looked through, came up with this system called CanSlim, and that's how he defines distribution days, and so that's the way that I've learned how to define distribution days as well. And when you get enough of these distribution days in a row all piled up together, it's an early warning sign that uh, the indexes may get ready to roll over. Now, you could apply distribution days uh, on, on TradingView. You could take this indicator, you could put it on any index, you could put it on a stock, and it does have a little bit of applicability to different stocks. Uh, I've, I've used it sparingly, like it's a very secondary or even a tertiary indicator for me if I'm putting it onto a stock. Um, even on the indexes too, it, it's kind of, you know, like just one piece of the puzzle, but if you are interested in looking at distribution days and flagging them and everything, this makes it super simple and automated and you can't get better than that. So let's take a look at the S&P 500. Let's zoom in a little bit more on this chart and we'll get rid of the relative strength line versus the S&P 500. Obviously don't need it there. If we wanted it back, we could always just bring it back. So get rid of it there. Pop open the PineScript editor again and we can add our distribution days. All right, so this is the code for the distribution days and we will just add this to to this chart we want to add this to the daily chart uh, it, you can add it it's not meant for a weekly chart um, because it's looking at when you're looking at distribution days you want to be looking at days so if you overlay it on a weekly chart it doesn't really apply so add it to the daily chart and now we could see um, all the different distribution days that have been flagged and you could see that the distribution has kind of been far and few between and so it kind of makes sense at least in the the way that William O'Neill sees markets that, yeah, uh, we're, we're continuing to run at this point, the distribution count is very low. One of the things that's important to look at too is the number of distribution days over any 25 day period. Anything longer than 25 days and the distribution days kind of get stale and they don't really apply as much to the current trend. So we want to see how many days have been racked up over a rolling 25-day period. And within TradingView, you can automate that as well. So let's overlay the distribution day count onto this daily chart. So uh, add to chart. And we can see the distribution day count here. So... Over the past 25 trading days, uh, we've had six distribution days. Now, within uh, some of the nuances of looking at distribution days, specifically within the Can Slim William O'Neill system, it, when you move about 6% above a distribution day, that distribution day falls off. I haven't figured out how to automate that part of it to put it into this code yet. So this code is not accounting for things like that, but it is giving you account of the number of distribution days that you've had over the past 25 days. And that in itself is useful. So, so we talked about the automatically flagging distribution days. We've talked about the distribution day count. Um, now, 
Uh, let's look at one more. I want to show you the new highs versus new lows and how we could add that to the chart as well. So another thing that I like to look at on TradingView and when I'm assessing market health is to evaluate the number of new highs versus new lows being made uh, on uh, the New York Stock Exchange and also on uh, the NASDAQ. TradingView makes it real easy to look at that right on the chart. So here is another Pine script editor. So open up this one here. That's just the guy that made it. So uh, thank you, uh, Jeng C. Ohi. And open that up and add that to the chart. And let's, let's blow this up so that way it makes it a little easier to read. And we can see that the number of new highs being made has dramatically outpaced the number of new lows being made. And you can see when the number of new lows starts to creep up, it kind of precedes a little bit of a dip in, in the market. And we saw that there. Uh, we saw that over here, right? If you're looking at that lower indicator. And when the new highs are starting to dry up, that's also correlates pretty closely to when you see a little bit of sideways chop slap action and a little bit more of a correction. So things to be aware of and things that make TradingView such a powerful tool and one of the reasons why I like it so much and the fact that you could get all this for only, uh, for my membership, it's only 20 bucks a month for the just a pro, it's only $10 a month. It, it's, uh, you can't beat it. I, I looked around and uh, there's not really a whole lot out there that offers uh, the same kind of flexibility and ease of use and just the just well what you're able to automate uh, all in a nice little neat little package so so I really like trading view and I hope that you got a lot out of this video so if you want all those codes I'm going to link them down in the video description below so just copy paste them put them right into trading view and you'll be able to use them right away i'm also going to create a blog post uh that will have all the stuff as well you'd be able to grab it from there too um if you're watching this on youtube you'd probably just want to use the description so um but anyway uh if you don't have trading view yet and you're considering it i'll link the an affiliate link down to TradingView below. Uh, they have an affiliate program. I decided to take advantage of it. I'm, that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose is because so many of you have asked questions about TradingView. I really love the service. That's why I'm willing to put something together like this and share it with you guys. And yeah, if you do uh, want to sign up, it would be great if you decided to use that affiliate link too. It, every little bit helps. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Really, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, click that little thumbs up button. That'll very help us out tremendously. And also make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that way you get all of our updates. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care, and have a great day.